Hey everybody, we've got parts to make. The mill is almost set up and ready to go, but we do need to load some tools. I've got 45 minutes before I need to go pick up material, so if we can at least get one part done in that time, I'll be happy. The part we're making today looks like this, but we'll get into the details later. This part is not actually a customer part. This is a experiment in two different ways. One, we're gonna use my multi-axis method here that's not actually multi-axis and see if we can get a little bit better at that. And then secondly, this is kind of a proof of concept for something that I wanna make down the road. You'll understand a little bit more later. But right now I have two different big active jobs and I'm waiting on materials for both of them. So this was a great time to try out some more experimental stuff. All of our tools are loaded up, and now we need to touch off our work coordinate system. In a perfect world, I would have a gauging palette that I could put on here, but I don't have one of those. So I'm gonna need to get a little bit creative, and I think we can do it with just this thing here. Uh, my goal for this work coordinate system is for it to be in the center of rotation on this thing, so as I, I turn it around, I don't have to reprobe every individual side. Kind of like a lathe where the center of rotation is your x-axis. That's what I'm going here, except it'll be my, my z and my y. And only my x-axis will change because I'll keep that on the end of the workpiece. We can't trust the material I have in there to be centered or, you know, not gollywoggle in any given direction. But I'm thinking if I probe uh, left, right, and top on one side and then flip it, uh, 180 degrees and probe left, right, and top on there. We should be able to average those and that should give us our work coordinate system. I don't know how to explain this without like a drawing, but basically if it's tipped like this the first time I probe it, it'll be tipped like this the second time. And if we average those, we'll get to the point where it would be straight up and down. So I think this will work. It's not gonna be perfect, but it should be pretty close. So let's make sure we're in the right offset. Go ahead and probe. And I guess I just want to probe the top here. Okay. Now let's switch to G55. The first one was on G54. Uh, go back into our probing menu, move our probe out of the way, rotate our vise 180, find Y center. And we'll probe Z. Should be done with this for a second. Okay, so now I'm just going to average those and then move them down here into this work offset 59.1. That is going to be the center line of this Aroa palette system forever. I will never move that, but I can use that to drive probing for like G54. Uh, G59.2, that'll be the center of this here. And the reason I'm using those offsets is because those are ones that I will never ever use for anything else. I will never type that into an MDI line accidentally, um, like I might do with G54. G54 through G59, I treat as miscellaneous, uh, like temporary work offsets. Those are never sacred. They're always something I can overwrite. Uh, G59.1 is something that I will never accidentally overwrite. So that will be my AROA. Ooh, I guess I can even write a description. Eroa horizontal. If I spelled that right, the, now we have that saved forever. So I'm just gonna do the math here and I'll be back. All right, that should work. I have my numbers in here. And also I shifted this down by half the thickness of the part. So I measured this and I, since we were probing the top, I shifted down by half and that should put us in the middle. Uh, I suppose we can do a test here. So if I come out here and let's see, I make sure I'm in G59.1. Okay, G59.1. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go to my Z0. I know I could give it a G code command, but whatever. All right, we're pretty close to Z0. Let's go to Y0. Okay. And maybe 
for the sake of seeing what we're doing, we can go over and I don't know, that at least passes the sniff test. Uh, it's at least at approximately the right point. And I guess I'll probe the end of that while we're already here, which is just one button. I don't think I was fast enough to even get that. Okay, so that work offset set. Let's go get our other one. And this one, this uh, bore has a ground surface on the inside of it. So this is really easy. Again, a gauging palette would be ideal here, but I don't have one. Okay. All right, and there is our X and Y for that. I think we're done probing uh, until we're ready to run the vertical operation. So I think we're ready to machine. All right, here goes nothing. I feel like my mist coolant's a little bit heavy. I might need to turn down my oil mix. Is my drill long enough? We're getting close. <laughs> I thought I had enough stick out, but I didn't actually measure because, well, I thought I had enough. So I'm gonna stick out that drill a tad more. All right, back at it, right where we left off. All right, hole's done. onto an eighth inch reamer. Now this reamer is probably actually the wrong size for what I'm doing, but it's the only one I had on hand. So it might work, it might not, but this needs to be a fairly tight fit on some pins. And I think it's gonna be a loose fit on some pins, but we'll see when it's done, I suppose. Worst case scenario, I just drill it on size instead of trying to ream it. Uh, this hole might be a little bit small for this tool. Wee bit of vibration. All right, so that was a, a tap drill. Well, obviously not a drill. It was a pre-tap hole. Now we're tapping quarter 20. Okay, I'm normally afraid of rigid tapping, but that was pretty painless. I guess I should be less of a pansy. And now deep buried. So it's chamfering a little bit deeper than it should because I didn't take into account that there's still stock here. That stock gets removed in the next stop. So we got some deep chamfers, but it's brass, it's fine. And that is the end of the first program. So basically just some holes drilled and tapped and some ugly deburring. We can move to op two, which is actually the bulk of the machining on this part. And that is in this orientation. Oh, it is actually in that orientation. And while we're here, we just need to probe on that top finished surface. I like seeing the reflection of the probe tip. That's kind of fun. And now we run the part. So I had to post a second little program to add some tool paths that I missed apparently, like finishing the outside. Um, and I forgot to turn off coolant on those. So 
camera got a little bit wet, but everything seems fine. And our little recliner here is looking pretty good. Uh, if you ignore the fact that it was off center and I missed the, um, the outside there, but it'll still get the job done for the, the purposes of this little test. So now this goes back in there, uh, this side up, I believe. So that should be pretty good. Tabs off nicely. Our bottom finishes look shockingly good. A nice little armchair. Over to the lapping plate. <laughs> this needs new paper on it. All right, tabs gone. I didn't deburr the backside at all, which I kind of regret, but for these purposes, it'll be fine. And there's our part. It looks pretty good. I should probably measure it, even though tolerances on this thing don't matter since it's just a test part. But the process was pretty quick and easy. And with some creative Scotch-Brite work, you can't even tell that I didn't machine one of the sides. Let's see how our pins do. Yeah, there. That one is loose, at least. I was hoping for this to be more of a press fit, but I knew I was using the wrong reamer. Honestly, though, maybe if I used a little bit of like a, um, a retaining compound in there, like one of the Loctites, that might actually work. And when this thing is in action, those pins are going to be held in place. So I suppose I need to make the rest of it now. But this is about what I was going for. I love it when things just work. Oh, also my pins are a little bit too long, so they hang out on the back a little bit but it won't hurt anything. So this part is a great example of one that would be just fine as a three-up part in a traditional vise. But is life really worth living if you're not making that one guy on Practical Machinist really angry? I don't think so. Anyway, my 45 minutes is up and I need to make customer parts. If you would like to be one of my customers, check out subtractmanufacturing.com and either I or someone else on the network will knock out those parts for you. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time when I make the rest of this assembly.